and welcome to <laughs> it's amazing how it works when you turn it on good morning and welcome to Manasquan United Methodist Church my name is Reggie Albert I'm blessed to be the pastor here and you just heard when the Saints go marching in by our wonderful handbell choir today is the day we celebrate Mardi Gras the last Sunday before we begin the reflective time of Lent. And so today we celebrate. We have our beads on this morning, and we're going to have a pancake dinner on Tuesday night, which is called Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday. And you're welcome to come from 5.30 to 6.30. We've got an awesome group of cooks that will be making pancakes, so come and join us. 
Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, which is this coming Wednesday. We'll have a short service at 7 a.m. here in the sanctuary, and at 7, uh, 7 o'clock at night, we will have a time of a full worship service. So come as we begin Lent together and celebrate with us. We have a video now of Fountain of Grace, which is our theme for Lent. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. Thou anointest my head, my cup runneth over. Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. In Lent, we remember our humanity. We need food and water for our bodies and for our souls. From the cup of salvation to the drinks of living water, Scripture is full of nourishment from God, even and especially if your cup is empty. Come and drink from the fountain of grace. Amen and amen. So as we begin our Lenten season, there is a sign up in the back for the pancake dinner. And we also have some other things happening that we'd like you to know about. We have new car magnets. And if you would like one, it says, Be happy, come to Manasquam Methodist Church. And there in the back, you're welcome to take one. If you want to give a donation, that would be a wonderful thing. Uh, also, just a, an announcement, George and Sharon's uh, Tiedemann's son, Joe, has been appointed to St. Paul's Methodist Church in Ocean Grove. Amen? He grew up in this church, and so we're really proud of him. Amen and amen. We have Bible studies on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. It's the Chosen series, so you're welcome to join us uh, for either one. They're hybrid. And also, today's a special day because we have two birthdays to celebrate. One is Jenny Shook. And she's here for the first time since the pandemic uh, began. And so we want to sing happy birthday to her. And it's also our music director, Christine Pastor Chick's birthday. And so we want to also celebrate her. And we have a special coffee hour that everyone is invited to with a keto cake. And, and then a cake for the rest of us. <laughs> So how about if Christine plays her own happy birthday song and we sing together? Amen? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jenny and Christine. Happy birthday to you. Amen and amen. And let's continue to worship. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and happy Sunday to you all. Our opening chorus is Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. I am on. Our opening chorus this morning is Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. You're going to be joined by the bells. And if you were lucky enough to sit in a pew with a tambourine, this is audience participation time. Very easy now. You can't mess this up. It's very easy. Here's when you hit that tambourine. On the ha lay. <laughs> that easy. ha lay, ha lay, ha lay. Got it? Let's give it a try. If you've got a tambourine, let's hear it. Ready? ha lay, ha lay, ha lay. Of course, it's going to go much faster than that. Right? And feel free to, like, let the spirit move you and sing and dance in the aisles. That's what we want. This is a celebration. Stand and sing with us. Holly, hallelujah. We got it. Here we go. Holly.
<laughs> Please remain standing for the call to worship. The light of Christ be upon you and within you. And also with you. These moments when the light shines are gifts from God. May things that are cloudy become clear. May faith that was shaky become solid. As we look upon the radiance of the Lord Jesus, we are being changed bit by bit into his likeness. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let, Let the light shine. shine. Please be seated for opening prayer. Most loving God, we thank you for the radiance that transfigured the whole being of Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. We are grateful for the light that has broken through in every generation since, even to our generation. Please teach us to treasure the special transfigured moments, that they be a lasting encouragement for us when we must travel pathways across hot and shifting dunes or through deep and shadowed valleys. Assist us to travel faithfully, lovingly, with a bravery that refuses to be put down by bullying fears, energy draining doubts, or persecuting harassment for our faith. Through Jesus Christ our Savior, we pray, amen. Have you ever tried to have a conversation and share your faith with a non-believer or someone who doubts, and you get into this debate and you shut down. And you say, okay, but do whatever you want. Believe whatever you want. Sometimes that happens. The right thing to do, we don't always have a script for it, right? We just have to speak from our hearts and share with people what we believe. And sometimes the stories are unbelievable. Like today, the story of the transfiguration, and you get that glazed look over your friend's or your family member's face, and they say, oh, yeah, <laughs> okay, he did what? <laughs> this song by Nicole Nordeman is called What If, and the lyrics are so beautiful. They really touch your heart. I hope they touch your heart today because um, it, it reflects that kind of conversation or discussion you might have with someone about your faith. You're trying to share your faith. And I love that it's in the form of questions. So you're answering questions with a question, turning it around, making, doing a little flip, and making the other person think as well. And this is called, What If? What if you're right? What if it's true? They say the cross will only make a fool of you. And what if it's true? What if he takes his place in history with all the prophets and the kings who taught us love and came in peace? But then the story ends. What then? But what if you're wrong? What if there's more? What if there's hope you've never dreamed of hoping for? What if you jump? Just close your eyes. What if the arms that catch you, catch you by surprise? What if he's more than What if it's love? What if you dig way down deeper than your simple-minded friends? What if you dig? What if you find a thousand more unanswered questions down inside? 
Amen. And amen. Beautiful. Now I've got it all. Today's scripture is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. About eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with them. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came in and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning, as we go to prayer, we have a number of, of uh, praises this morning. One is we want to give thanks. Uh, Linda and Dave Tebb's son, Robbie, was married this week to Linda Stoner, and we're praising God. They were married on Tuesday, you know, two, 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 two. <laughs> so we give thanks for them, and God bless them. Also today, our hearts are heavy for the people of the Ukraine. And so, my friends, I think it's more than appropriate that we have a moment of silence where we lift up our brothers and sisters. As you know, when uh, the Southern Conference uh, started a Russia peace initiative, we went to Smolensk, which is eight hours from Moscow, whereas the Northern New Jersey Conference went to the Ukraine. So we do have many connections in the Ukraine, so please let us lift up our brothers and sisters. Let us pray.
Lord God, we lift up to you the people of the Ukraine and the people of Russia. And we pray for peace and an end to the violence and the brutality. And we pray, Lord God, and we know that you are there. And we pray for the families and the children and the older people. And we just lift them all up to you, Lord. And we pray for the leaders that they might know peace to rush down mountain streams and fill the places of leadership with hope and peace. Lord God, we lift up these people to you. In your name we pray. Amen? Amen. And for our own prayer requests here this morning, we want to pray for Glenn Cook, who's been hospitalized for testing. So please keep him and Carol in your prayer, as well as uh, Nancy and Don and Bob, Christine and Karen, Steve, Christopher, George, Robbie, Sarah, Barbara, and Mary. We have quite a boatload of folks that we're praying for. But it also seemed appropriate today for us. We have bulletins. They're not quite right on some cases, but we do have bulletins, and we wanted to lift up to those who are on our prayer list, uh, who are in our military uh, actively serving. Paul and Natalie Malou, Lee Thorpe, Sean Cox, Ryan Palmieri, Ted Kostick, Jeff Chance, Taylor Nesbitt, Rachel Ulrich, Chip Blackledge, Michael and Thomas Santos, Philip Cahill, Joanna Cahill, Kelly Ron, Matthew Kemack, Scott Reitemeyer, James Dentiste, and our incoming pastor, uh, Jorge um, Barrosa. His brother was just promoted to staff sergeant in the Army, and his name is Jorge Rodriguez. So we lift up these men and women, and if any of them are, are no longer in the service or if you have other names, please call the church office. Let us go to the Lord. Lord God, you have put your ho wonderful hope in us, born of the Spirit of Jesus. This hope empowers us to be your servants in this world, bringing light and dark into darkness, hope into despair, warmth into coldness, friendship into loneliness, food into hunger, care into trouble. We are out in the open, not hidden away with shame for our beliefs and love of you. We long to shine brightly with your Spirit in us as we bring a healing touch, a shoulder to lean on, an arm across the shoulders of someone who is hurting, a hand to lift someone up, a ride to the grocery store, the doctor's office, or just ourselves being present. Lord Jesus, let us remember that after you were transfigured and you were blessed by God as his chosen son, you came down off that mountain and you didn't stay up there. You came down among your people. Lord, you are still in our midst. You are still healing. You are still touching lives. And so we pray that you will do so today in our midst here and around the world. We pray that your light will shine and transform the world. Bring your hope into this world as we pray the way you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. At this time, we'll have our children's message. I don't know if there are any children here that are brave enough to come up. Okay, maybe not today. <laughs> But for those of you online, here's my question. What do you think is the best thing that God created? And I'll need some adult help on this. What's the best thing that you think God created? And after we say that, we're going to say, wow, God. So just stand up and shout something out. Us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What else? <laughs> that was a good one, right? <laughs> Anything else? Rainbows. Rainbows. Wow. Okay, Eileen. Eileen's covering all the bases. She said all the animals. It, wow. Right? And somebody, I think, said rainbow. Wow. Anybody else? Jesus. Jesus. Oh! <laughs> Christine's back here.
here saying, Jesus, Jesus. Wow, right? Well, let's, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for all the amazing things that you have created in our lives. Thank you for all creation. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the Holy Spirit coming among us. And thank you for each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and thank you for this holy ground that we're standing on, which is what we're singing about right now. So will you stand and sing with me? We are standing on holy ground. I don't think you need a tambourine for this one. <laughs> When we think about creation, we can see the splendor and the glory of God in the mountains and the glaciers and the lagoons and the jungles and the deserts and upon the Jersey Shore. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Places that give us wonder and perspective. Frederick Buechner shares this story. He said it was about a Christmas pageant. Uh, that an Episcopal church had, and the manger was down front of the chancel steps, as it always was, and Mary was there in her blue robe, and Joseph in his cotton beard, and the wise men were there in their bathrobes with a handful of shepherds, and of course in the midst of them was the Christ child lying on the straw. And the nativity story was read out loud by a friend, and, and the carols were sung at the appropriate places, and all went like clockwork. Until it came to the arrival of the angels, the heavenly host, represented by all the children in the congregation who were robed in white with sparkly halos. And they were scattered throughout the congregation in the pews. And at the right moment, they were supposed to come forward and gather around the manger and sing glory to God in the highest on earth, peace and goodwill among all people. And that was just what they did, except that there were so many of them that there was a lot of crowding and jockeying for position. <laughs> Yeah, with the result that one little angel, a nine-year-old little girl who happened to be a little shorter than the rest, ended up on the far-out fringes that even craning her neck and standing on tippy toes, she couldn't see what was going on. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace and goodwill among all people. They all sang it on cue. And then there was that momentary pause that was waiting until the next thing to be done, when this small girl electrified the entire church by crying out in a voice that was shrill with irritation and frustration and enormous sadness because her view was blocked. And she said, let Jesus show. Let Jesus show. Remember that. 
Leonard Sweet said, once you see Jesus, you can't unsee Jesus. It says in John 12, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people unto me. Do we trust Jesus to do what he says he will do? Lift him up, and he'll take it from there. Today is not only Mardi Gras, but also Transfiguration Sunday, the last Sunday of the Epiphany, the season that started with the Magi following a star, a light in the sky that leads us to Lent, a time of quiet reflection within the church. Jesus in the Transfiguration, that was a moment revealing the divine within him. He stood with Moses up on that mountainside, that mountaintop, Moses who was given the law, and Elijah, one of the great prophets. But why? To show who he really is? We really don't know the answer to that. But we know that it was set in the framework of his three-year ministry. It was about two-thirds of the way done. And now he was turning his face to Jerusalem and the cross. His ministry was now toward the end. What was on Jesus' mind? Well... Eight days before this mountain climb, he had had a conversation. Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And then he asked them, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, always Peter blurting out something, right? The Messiah of God. And Jesus then shared the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes and be killed and the third day be raised. And he said to them all, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. So I guess he, he was processing what was to come, trying to prepare those closest to him and even himself for the sacrifice he was about to give, for the pain that he was going to be given. And they would all follow him. Where do you go to think things through? Moses and Jesus often went to the mountains, like Eric does. I like the inlet or the shore. It's quiet and peaceful. But you know what? Even after being there for a little while, I come back and very quickly, it's gone. It's momentary. It's temporary, right? Creating space for that perspective. Because the world starts coming in and, and we, we try to go away. It's important for us to go away, to, to separate ourselves so that we can be back to our default settings. To reconnect with God. To feel again God's love for us and our love for him. Jesus often did this. He went up the mountain often to pray alone. And, and here he took his dearest friends with him, as he would do later. Close friends for him to be with and to talk about what was to come. Maybe they needed this moment as much as he did. And then with dazzling light and seeing Moses and Elijah, his friends were wowed. They fell to their knees on holy ground. What a vision of the light. Let's build tents here and stay here forever. But we can't. They couldn't. We can't stay on the mountaintop or by the seashore. Wow. But a glimpse of the light of the world. What happens afterwards? When they come down from that mountaintop, real life and suffering come crashing in. Luke wrote this, that there was another follow, father, another father calling out to Jesus, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He's my only child. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks and it convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. 
Jesus answered, you faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, a demon dashed the child to the ground in convulsions, but Jesus rebuked that unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father, and all were astounded at the greatness of God. Down the mountain to a world full of pain and suffering and injustice. But here's the thing. God's presence remains with us. Just as he did with the disciples. Fred Craddock describes the transfiguration of Christ as the shout heard round the world. The glorious announcement of what had happened in Bethlehem years before. It was the final epiphany, the final aha, the transfiguration that leads us to Lent and at the same time gives us a taste of Easter glory. Do you remember what John said about Jesus? He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into the being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. That is our wow moment, even now. When our hearts are breaking like the Father in heaven, who declared his Son his chosen and calls out to us down through the ages, listen to him, listen to him. He was sent in love. Let Jesus show, let Jesus show as he sacrificed himself for our salvation. And what about that father that was in the valley hoping for a miracle for his child? We do not go alone here, now, anywhere. Even with this Ukrainian crisis, how helpless we feel in the sight of such violence and brutality. We hold on to the light of Christ in this darkness, and we count on the God who has created creation. Beauty all around us, the stars, the moon, the sun, the sunflower, created us who loves us enough to show us himself. And we give thanks. Wow. Let us realize that this is holy ground and see the vision of a mighty God who is powerful and just. He calls us to prayer. He calls us to action. He calls us to mountaintops. He calls us into the valleys. He calls us to the hospital beds. He calls us to the funerals. But then again, he calls us to the baptism of welcoming the children and the people into his family. He celebrates the weddings among us, the love that we share with family and friends. You know, there's another possibility. Perhaps the transfiguration was not so much about the change in Jesus as it was the change in his disciples. The light was always coming from him, but they needed to have some kind of an experience where they could see it, to open themselves to see the light of Christ. Are you open to seeing the light? Remember, once you see Jesus, you can't unsee Jesus. His light is always around us every day, every place, with every person. So lift him up, and he'll take it from there. Wow. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen. May our offering this morning be an invitation to living a life radically transformed and transfigured by the God's power, God's love, and God's grace. Amen. And the giving ways, you can put money in the offering plate, you can put money in the mail, you can put money on Vanco and our website, you can put money in the Venmo. There are many ways in which to support the ministries of the church. Amen and amen. Will you stand for the doxology? <laughs>
Let us pray. Transforming God, we come this morning knowing that in our giving and in our living, we are blessed. Blessed with all the love in our lives. Blessed to be a part of the ministries you call us to. Blessed to make a difference. We pray all these things in the mighty love of Jesus. Wow, that we could be a part of it. Amen and amen. And wow, our closing hymn is Holy, Holy, Holy. Two verses of that which will lead right into, beautifully, shine, Jesus, shine. And you will walk out of here dancing. Or you will dance out of here. now the benediction. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that, those, so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Amen and amen. My friends, we're so grateful that you worshiped with us today. We pray a blessing on you as we uh, enter into Mardi Gras and Carnival. And may you prepare your hearts for Lent, the Lenten season to begin. Pancake dinner on Tuesday night, 5.30 to 6.30. The sign-up is here or call the church office. Bible study, everyone's welcome to join us, 7 p.m. Tuesday, 9 a.m. Wednesday. Also, Ash Wednesday service, 7 a.m., short service, 7 p.m., worship. Next Sunday, the first Sunday of Lent. Prepare your hearts by beginning to think about what you would add on to your schedule to make a difference. What will you do? Maybe you will sacrifice. Maybe you will fast. Maybe you will give up something during this Lenten season to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made. So prepare your hearts as we begin this time of Lent as we march with all the saints before us. <laughs>